Hi friends, hope you are doing fine. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to address the question about returning to India as a PhD or postdoc. And this is an option which many people have to contemplate at a certain point of their life if they have been doing their PhD abroad or they have gone abroad for a postdoc stint and they may be thinking about applying for a faculty position in India. And this video is also going to be useful to anybody who has done a PhD or postdoc somewhere and wants to return to his or her home country or even to a different country for that matter. So let's begin. So now the number one point is that you have to apply to advertisements which essentially list out the details of a job and in many countries there may be specific portals for that so essentially sometime you have to go to the department web page and check out if ads are out there because many a time these jobs may not be captured by a typical portal such as hireatjobs.com or indeed.com but it may be possible that there are local websites which you need to look at to get some of this information now in case you are targeting certain institutions of course it's easy to go to their web page and check that out and you can do that now i would always suggest that you apply for positions which have been given out somewhere for assistant professor level job or lecturer level jobs because what some people do is that they shoot off an email to the department chairman and what the chairman may do is he or she may give you a visiting professor position or a visiting assistant professor position at very short notice that means they may do this quickly now this is a good idea if you are somebody whose visa is expiring and who needs to go back to india at short notice so this may be the case where you have finished your f1 practical training or your f1 and you need to go back to your home country or it may be the case that your h1 has expired and you need to go back so many of these situations are possible however the problem with the visiting professor jobs is that you need to essentially apply to the open positions which are out there to get the permanent job so keep that in mind that this is a temporary job and you will have to apply for the permanent job sometime later so this is something you need to remember. Now, most of the visiting professors are essentially teaching related. So any institution like the Indian Institute of Technologies where teaching is very important will be a good place to apply if you're looking for a short term visiting professor position. Now, let's come to the number two point, which is what are the documents you need to apply for this type of job? So essentially the documents you need to have are the cover letter, your CV, a research statement, and a teaching statement now essentially most of the time that is also going to be an application form where you have to fill in all the information such as your date of birth your place of birth and so on because remember as far as the Indian system is concerned it does look at age so there are certain age restrictions such as 35 years for the assistant professor job though it is relaxed in some cases so you need to keep that in mind that you should apply for these jobs before this age limit is encountered. So generally I have seen that younger candidates are people who get some edge as far as these positions are concerned provided their resume is strong. Of course people are going to compare the resumes here. Now some specific points for India I'm going to tell you. One is that in your cover letter do not necessarily write dear sir or madam. You can write dear professor X, whoever is the selection committee chair or the department chair. And also don't be too friendly. If you have been in US or some of these countries, you may be used to talking to people as dear John or dear Dan, but do not write dear Venkat or dear Srini or something like that to the department chairman because he is not your friend as of yet and may never be so keep that in mind that you should write to them as dear professor Srinivasan or dear professor Mukherjee or whatever the case may be now in case you do not know their name you can write dear sir or dear madam and that's also okay because generally they expect some level of respect in terms of being 
called by these names. Now, one more thing to remember is if somebody is at associate professor and full professor level, you should call them by prof. So this is prof something. And generally the assistant professors are referred to as doctor. So unfortunately this thing is done quite rigidly in many institutions. So people when they get promotion to associate professor are very cognizant of the fact that now they are prof something, whereas previously they were only doctor. So do not call associate professors and full professors as doctors when you're applying to Indian institutions. Now, as far as the CV is concerned, there are no specific guidelines, particularly to India, but I would say there are some things to keep in mind in the research statement. So in the research statement, you need to be very clear about what are your funding expectations. So if you expect 25 lakhs from the university or two crores from the university, be clear about why you need this kind of funding because sometime asking for a very large amount of money like people asking two crore or five crore can be a problem for the university because they may not have that kind of money at their disposal. So whenever you are asking for any type of funding, give a clear outline in a table as to why you need this money. So do you need it for computers? Do you need to buy some microscopes? Do you need to buy some machines? So need to exactly give out this particular detail. You need to list out the equipment you want to buy, the manufacturer and the cost. And you can then convert all this to rupees and then give out your actual number. So people like to see that you have done your homework as far as your demand for money is concerned. Now, most Indian universities do give you a pretty large startup grant. So that's something to keep in mind. But do remember that the directors and divisional chairman and dean do not like to see very large numbers here because they would like to distribute the money among a large number of assistant professors as the case may be. Now, the third issue is that of references. So essentially, as far as references are concerned, I would say that you should give a mixture of references from your abroad experience and your India experience. So if you have been abroad for a long time, of course, most of your references are going to be from abroad, but one or two references from India are also going to be beneficial to you. So if you know somebody from your bachelor's degree institution, your master's degree institution or your PhD institution, which was back there, you can give one of these professors because one of the reason why the India referee comes in useful is that they would like to know something about the candidate as far as that environment there is concerned. Now, I have mentioned before that somebody may be very successful in a well-oiled lab in a Western country, but when they return to India to a lab which they need to oil themselves, then it's a much more onerous experience and so it can be that this person may fizzle out. So again, a uh, lot of resilience is required in success, in being a success as far as research is concerned in the Indian setting. Now, generally, if you have a PhD advisor or a postdoc advisor, then you should always give his or her name as a reference because not giving their names as a reference is a red flag because which means that you have already fought with one of these people and therefore you may have a problem as far as dealing with people are concerned so unfortunately this is something which is considered in many situations now the next issue is the interview in the department so essentially the department is going to shortlist the various applications and is going to go through it. They are going to go through the cover letter, the CV, the research statement, the teaching statement and so on and then also go through some of the references. Now in most departments they first do a shortlisting and then they call the references. So in case your references are called you are probably in the shortlist. Now I think I should mention one more aspect about the teaching statement here is that in your teaching statement you should include the courses in the department which you can teach. So some of this information you may be able to get from the department web page or the catalog and then also mention a couple of new courses which you can add. 
Now, do not mention too many new courses because then they are going to think that you are only interested in posing your own courses because do remember that the BTEC curriculum and the MTEC curriculum are more or less fixed. There is very little room for adding some new course, especially in the BTEC curriculum. So you do have to teach the elementary courses and you should give a lot of emphasis on the various elementary courses which you can teach. So the teaching statement should mention some of these aspects. Now, the fourth point was the interview in the department. If you have been shortlisted, you are going to get an email from the selection committee chair or the department chairman saying there is going to be an interview. They are going to fix this interview on Skype, Zoom or Team as the case may be. And then there are going to be several faculty members in this interview panel. Sometimes they may even call you for a campus visit and then you may have to give a presentation here. Now this presentation may be your PhD work, your postdoc work or ideally a combination of both. Now here I would say that always try to make a talk which focuses on a few things preferably on one thing or at max two things because sometimes people who have done a lot of work they present a large number of slides on disparate topics and what happens is that the people get quite confused as to what is the real strength so keep that in mind also whatever you present you need to own this work so do not show slides of things in which you were a secondary participant for example because what's going to happen is the faculty and especially in many cases the students who are present in the room are going to ask you some pretty tough questions and if you are not able to answer some of these questions then it comes across very negatively and then what happens the candidate is unfortunately often removed at this stage because what people think is that he or she does not own their research maybe the research has been done by somebody else uh, i already mentioned the issue of the well oiled labs and so what often happens people think that maybe this work was done in conjunction with the postdoc in conjunction with the professor who has done most of the thinking and the student has essentially done a lot of the groundwork and a lot of the grunt work actually so this is something which can be there in the mind of some of the people now some of the questions which are specific if you are applying from abroad are going to be that why are you planning to return to India and will you actually join so again they are not going to exactly ask you will you exactly join but they're trying to figure out from your answers if this is true because what ha happens is that many times when people interview a candidate from abroad they go through the entire process and at the end of the day they decide not to join then this entire time is wasted and the search has to be restarted again so essentially the best answer here is a combination of personal and professional reason if your answer is only personal like you want to be near your parents or something like that people will think you are not professionally serious and Generally, if your answer is very professional, that may be okay, but then people will ask you, well, you can get a job in some different country where professionally you may have access to better facilities or to better equipment or something like that. So you need to have a good answer to that. Most people are able to figure out the seriousness of a candidate who is planning to return to India by asking some of these questions. Now, the fifth point is that if you clear this interview in the department, then there is going to be some shortlisting again and there is going to be an interview with the administration of the institute or the university. So these people are typically the directors, the deans, the divisional chairman and the chairman of the department and a couple of external experts are also going to be there. So here again, you will have to make a presentation and then you will be asked many questions. Now at this point, the external experts are going to ask you some questions on the presentation and your domain. So these experts are often senior professors in the field. They may even be ex-directors of national labs or current directors of national labs or people like that. Now, most of the time, the questions here are meant to figure out whether you have some bigger theme in mind or do you have a vision as far as your particular research is concerned because the vision is required to sustain you over a period of 5, 10 or 20 years and also they would like to see if you have thought about your role in the national programs and in the different projects which are going on in the country and the different institutions and how you are going to get funding from them. 
Now, most of the time they look for two aspects which are make or break in these interviews and they are attitude and seriousness. So again, generally a combination of both these things needs to be good. So generally you need to have a positive approach to everything. If you show a negative approach right at this point, then it's unlikely that you are going to cross the considerable barriers which are going to be there in setting up a research lab in India and doing good research. And in case you are not a very serious candidate, it's also going to be like you are seeming somewhat frivolous during the interview and maybe you are doing the interview too casually. So do remember as far as India is concerned, there is some thinking that seriousness is a good thing. So you may have to put on a different hat than if you are in US or UK or some of these countries where it may be okay to crack a joke every now and then. And here, of course, people are looking at the candidate being very serious, being very driven, being very diligent and hardworking. And some of these things should come out in the interview. So these were some points I had for you today about uh, the process of returning to India as a PhD or postdoc from a foreign university and how you can improve your chances in this process. So like I mentioned, this is a difficult decision. You need to think a lot about it. I will make some videos about the good and bad aspects of returning to India as a PhD, typically for assistant professor job. There are of course many good aspects, but there are a lot of challenges also in this thinking. So keep these things in mind. So I hope this, this video is useful to you and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.